2,000 years after the departure of Jesus the Christ. The prophets are back to teach the real Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel, their true nationality. This is their campaign. You're not supposed to try to follow Christ. You're supposed to follow Christ. There's no trying here, brother. There's no trying. Once you, once you just don't, once you just don't try, you ain't gonna do it because you're gonna follow the doctrine of the world. Because that's the reason you had a female pastor. You get out of that, which is good, but you're still in foolishness because you say you follow Christ, and I don't see no attributes of Christ within you. Because, because Christ said, Christ said, you must walk as He walked. Why did Christ say? I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you. Hold the button. Oh, you can, one second, hold your peace. I'm going to answer your question. Every question you have, Daddy, Lord's will, I'll be able to answer them. If I can't answer them, another officer will answer them for you. Okay, come on. John chapter 18 and verse 19. Come on. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Of his what? And of his doctrine. He asked Christ, what is your doctrine? So, Teddy, the question I must ask you is, what is your doctrine? Because you say you follow Christ. Yeah. And we know there are thousands of doctrines out here. People say they love Christ, they follow Christ, they go to church, they follow the Bible. But which doctrine are you following? Because the, for the last time I checked in this book, there's only one doctrine. We're going to find out. Hold on, Ted. I'm going to show you. Jesus answered him. I spake openly to the world. Uh -huh. I ever taught in the synagogue. Uh -huh. Wait, what do Christ ever taught? In the synagogue. In the synagogue, he ever taught in the synagogue because there were many synagogues throughout Jerusalem and other country where the Jew dwells, right? Watch this. And in the temple. In the temple. The temple of Solomon, read. Whether the Jews or whether, who? whether the Jews the whole world. The Jews. Christianity. The Jews. Seven events. The Jews. Pentecost. The Jews. The Jews. We always resort. No, sometimes. Always resort. Always resort. That's what Christ ever teach. Now we're gonna find out what is the doctrine he teach them. What and what? Whether the Jews always resort. Huh? And in secret have I said nothing. In secret he has said nothing. Now what doctrine did, did Christ teach? Now, you on. Christ said you must be born again. You must be born again. Very good. John three. Very good. Very good. But what doctrine though? You still haven't tell me anything. Okay, before you give me that, give me John 7 verse 14. I'm going to show you what doctrine Christ is talking about. And for you Christian that talk about Christ bring something new, it's impossible. Christ didn't bring anything new. Say that again? Exactly. Come on. John chapter 7 and verse 14. Come on. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. Who? Jesus went up into the temple and taught. Remember, it just said in John 18, Come on, Teddy, pay attention. You can look at the picture after. Can't do two things at the same time. Remember, earlier we read in 1 John, uh, we read in John 18, that it says the doctrine was he teaching the Jews in the temple and in the synagogue. And in secret, he had not say anything. Meaning he was in the open, speak to the Jews only. Now check this out, read. Now about the midst of the feast, it was the feast of tabernacle, read. Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, and the, and the Jews, who, who, who marveled? The Jews, who? The Jews, with the whole world. The Jews, start it over again, because that goes with what we just read. Because remember, it says in the temple, in the synagogue, and in the temple, he teach all the Jews. And he have not said anything in secret, correct? Start from the beginning, verse 14. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled. Say what? And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters? How do how do this guy understand what he's talking about? How knoweth this man letters? How do he understand the Bible so well? Read. Having never learned. Having what? Never learned. They thought Christ never learned, right? Well, my brother, what's your name, brother man? Alright, you alright, alright. My name is Obadiah. Come on. 
Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine. What is crisis? My doctrine is not mine. Your Christ bring new doctrine. My doctrine is not mine, uh -huh. but his that sent me. But his that sent me. Who sent Christ? God. Heavenly Father, right? God, right? Read. Verse 17. If any man will do his will, he, what is the will of God? Give me you, God. give me Romans 2.18. What is the will of God? To believe on Christ. To believe in Christ. That's the will of God. Is that according to you or according to the Bible? According to the Bible. According to the Bible. That's very wrong. And we're gonna prove that. Let's find out what the will of God is. Come on, Teddy, stick with me. Romans chapter 2 and verse 18. And knows his will. Notice what? And knows his will. Teddy, you must know God's will, brother. You can't just give me any foolishness you talk about. That's the Bible. That's a pure lie you just said just now. And I'm not trying to attack you, Teddy. You're my brother, but I gotta correct you, brother, because you're very wrong. Read. And knows his will. And approves the things that are more excellent. After you know the will, you have to approve those things. By your actions, how you speak, how you conduct yourself. Come on. Being the being instructed. Being what? Instructed. You have to be instructed. Right now we instruct you, Teddy, based upon the Bible. Come on. Out of the law. Out of what? Out of the law. Uh -huh. You have to be instructed out of the law. That's the will of God. Teddy, go back to where you were. John chapter 7 and verse 16. Verse 17. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. He shall know of what? Of the doctrine. He shall know of what? Of the doctrine. What is the doctrine, Teddy? The doctrine is the word of God. Yes, very, very true. Which is in, more, more in particular is what? The law. The law. I know. All right. Let's go to prove. Let's go prove. Read that again. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God, whether what, whether it be of God, uh -huh. or whether I speak of myself. Whether he speak of himself because what? How Christ conduct himself was based upon the, the the writings. Why did Christ come to this world for? You know, I'm gonna, we, we're gonna, that's a that's a Why fantastic question. You know? That's a fantastic question, and we're gonna answer that question, Daddy. But let's finish that segment real quick, and we'll jump to this next segment. Everything must be done decently and in order. Give me now, Proverbs chapter four, verse one and two. Let's find out the doctrine. All right, we're gonna continue to edify it on the doctrine. Come on, Proverbs chapter four and verse one. Come on, hear ye children. The instruction of a father. Teddy, would you would you agree that you're a child of God? Yes. Okay, my man, would you agree that you're a child of God? Absolutely, right? Young man, young man right here. You would, would you agree that you're a child of God? Very good. My man, my, my brother. All right, come on. And attend to no understanding. Okay. Hear your children the instruction so you can have the understanding of the instruction he's giving you. Giving you, right? Read. For I give you good doctrine. What does it give us? Good doctrine. What does it give us? Good doctrine. Christianity. Good doctrine. No. Catholicism. Good doctrine. He give us good doctrine. Read. Forsake ye not my law. Do not forget to keep God's law. Now let's bring out some of the law that you're breaking, Teddy. Give me beer. I'm going to show you, Teddy, you're not following Christ, brother. You're far from following Christ. Now we're going to bring you back to the remembrance so you may follow Christ properly. You're not following Christ, Teddy. Let's be real. No, you're not, brother. Let me ask you a question. Did Christ have beer? So what happened to your beard? No, no, you shaved your beard. Teddy. Stop playing games, Teddy. You shaved your beard. Okay, so how do you follow Christ? Christ had a beard. What? The Bible said to keep a beard. What? Give me that. Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. They shall not make boldness upon their head. Teddy, would you remove your hat? Now you have hair. Do you bald your hair so you can you can you can Max the the, the the ball spot, the hair from the back. Do you shave them off so you can match it up? Yeah. You're not supposed to do that, Teddy. If you're baldy, you gotta remain a baldy. I'm That's about right. to be bald. Right. I'm proud of it. It is what it is. That's right. That's right. You know, That's right. right. Come on. They shall not make baldness upon their head. The Bible said not to make baldness upon your head, Teddy. That's what the Bible said. Let's see if you talk about your beard also. Come on. Get Neither. So they shave off the corner of that beard. You're not supposed to sh shave the corner of your beard, Teddy. Right. You see, every man here, whatever they can grow, they keep it. Teddy, you in sin, Teddy. Teddy, what is, what is sin? What is sin? Oh, you know the answer, but it's keeping your beard as a law? Yes, it is. There's the law that was written in Leviticus. That's Moses telling the children of Israel, give me Exodus 24, verse 12. I'm going to show you, this is what Moses was telling the children of Israel. Remember the, uh, the, the first five book of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Remember that? 
That's what we will we, we, we listen to right now. That's what Christ can be beer. Now I'm going to go to our next sin that you're breaking, Teddy. You're not following Christ. You follow your imagination. Come on. Exodus chapter 24 and verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, uh -huh. Come up to me into the mount. That's my side eye. Come on. And be there. Uh -huh. And I will give you tables of stone uh -huh. and a law. And what? And, and a, and a law and commandments uh -huh. which I have written. Oh, hold on, Teddy. Go, hold on, Teddy. You, you ain't got to go nowhere. Yeah. Give me five minutes. Come on. And commandments uh -huh. which I have written that thou mayest teach them. That you may teach them. The law he teaches is to keep our beard. Don't eat pork. Now I'm going to show you. Like, let me ask you a question. The Christ had fringes. Give me that in Matthew. 920. 920. Let me ask you a question. The Christ had these on his, on, on his garment. I don't know. What's that? I don't know. You do not exactly tell you. You're not following Christ. You follow your imagination. Let's find out according to the Bible. Somebody give me the definition of him. H-E-M. Pull it out name. for me. It's right. Officer. It's supposed to be a, it's the definition of him. H-E-M. Let's show Teddy. If the Christ is the Christ had fringes in his garment. And give me the scripture about the woman with 12 years of uh, 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 blood issue. Come on. This is it. Matthew chapter 9 verse 20. And behold, a woman which was diseased. That, that's the one. Behold what? Behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood. 12 years. How many years? 12 years. How many years? 12 years. We're going to show you the power of keeping God's law. Brother, believe me. We came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. What did, what did the woman touch? The hem of his garment. Think about it. If we're all here in a carnival, so-called, right? I'm just saying a carnival for a reason because that's what we're most of us familiar with, right? When you're in a carnival, we're all pressing against each other, correct? What is the most easiest thing to touch on, on, on this person's body while you're in a carnival being pressed? Back. Exactly, the person's back, right? Shoulder or back, correct? Now we're going to show you the power of keeping God's law. Teddy, stick with us. Read. For she said within herself. Read it again. You got it, officer? And, be, and behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, uh -huh. 12 years, uh -huh. came behind him uh -huh. and touched the hem of his garment. It touched the hem of his garment. Christ had a garment. It touched the hem of his garment. Let's find out what hem is. Read. This is from the Zondervan. Come back by Bible dictionary written by a so-called white man. So any of us that wrote this book, they telling they telling on themselves through their books. All places we got them. Read. And pastors probably they probably got uh, that that uh, dictionary too. Of course. Now we're reading out of the book, hem of a garment, just like in the Bible. Hem of a garment, fringes. What is it? Fringes. What is it? Fringes. That's him. Read what you got again. I gotta go to and work. behold, a woman. Go to We're gonna finish that. Which was diseased with an issue of blood. Uh -huh. Twelve years came behind him uh -huh. and touched the hem of his garment. What is the hem, Teddy? No hem. The bottom. The bottom, which is what? Fringes. What you looking right here? Yeah. Christ had that. Read. For she said within herself, uh -huh. If I, if I may but touch his garment, if I may just touch his garment. It didn't say his back because the most easier part of the body to touch while you've been pressed in the public is the person's shoulder or the back. You answered that question, correct? Why would the woman go all the way low to touch the hem of the garment of Christ? Right. Brother, there's power in keeping God's law. Believe me when I tell you. Read. I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. Imagination. That's good. Teddy, you off the hook, man. Give me numbers 15. Give me numbers 15. We're gonna prove to you the Bible is telling you to keep so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American to keep your fringes from generation to generation to generation to come. That never dies. Read Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel. Remember, Christ was was after the book of Numbers. But he still kept his beard, which is written in the book of Leviticus. He still kept his fringes and the bar of his garment because it was written in the book of Numbers 15. And there was a reason why that was written. Read. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. The children is the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American. That's who you are. 
Beg them and persuade them. Talk to them that they make fringes on the board of your government. You can't put fringes on your pants, sister, because a sister's not supposed to be wearing pants. You're supposed to dress modestly. You're supposed to wear a skirt or a, 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 a dress. Not pants, sister. Come on. Throughout their generation. No, sometime. Throughout their generation. Do generation die? We all regenerate from generation to generation to generation. Read. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. A what? A ribbon of blue. On top of fringes, we have to put a ribbon of blue. Uh, no Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.